Hello, and I want to thank everybody for attending today's webinar and appreciate very much your efforts in efficiency and sustainability. First of all, I want to tell you about a few little taking care of business items here. There is a sidebar that you'll see there where you can ask questions. Uh, we probably were going to hold questions till the end. If we see some halfway through that look like they're particularly related to what was covered, we may take one or two, but most of the questions will be answered at the end of the webinar. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Dennis Roberts. I'm president of Energy Efficiency Done Right. The presenters are myself and Keith Roberts. Uh, very quickly, I'd like to let people know my background for why I can talk about such important uh, subject as energy efficiency and how it relates to windows. I am the president of Energy Efficiency Done Right, Advantage Windows Systems. I am a longtime energy advocate. I am also, I serve on the National Fenestration Rating Council Task Force for Interior Attachment Ratings. I am a published author on Energy Pulse. I'm an accredited lecturer and at Lincoln, a longtime energy advocate. This is one of the articles that uh, was published on temperature disparity and importance. First of all, I'd like to talk a little bit about energy efficiency and what the issue exactly is. Energy glazing through windows is the largest and most variable loss in buildings and homes and has major implications on energy consumption and peak heating and cooling loads according to the 2009 Buildings Industry Data Book. Looking at that thing in another way, we're looking at a survey done in 2003 by Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. The Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory is probably one of the most recognized laboratories in the world for energy and window issues. What Lawrence Berkeley determined was that in 2003, that windows alone in the United States were responsible for 2.15 quadrillion BTUs of heating energy consumption and another 1.48 quadrillion BTUs of cooling energy consumption in one year, and that was in 2003, in the United States alone. So windows are responsible for a tremendous amount of energy. Again, 2.15 quadrillion BTUs. We're not talking billions or trillions like stimuluses and things of that nature. We're talking about a huge number, quadrillions of BTUs lost through windows alone. Here's another way to look at it. According to ASHRAE, the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers, windows are responsible for more than 50% of a building's heat loss, according to the industry standard 90. So again, even though windows only represent about 18% of the envelope surface, they're responsible for over 50% of the heat loss in buildings. Now again, looking at the nature, the size of the problem, the Architecture 2030, which is a very advanced group of architects very concerned about energy independence, energy security, and clean air, did a study. And what they found out is if in the United States we put on 45 nuclear plants, not a good prospect with the problems with nuclear plants. If we significantly increased offshore drilling, not a very good thing to think about with the problem we had in the Gulf Coast, then if we did those two things, huge things with huge infrastructure, we would only be addressing about 3%, just 3% of the U.S. energy needs by the year 2030. However, if we make our buildings and homes much more energy efficient, we're addressing 11 times more, over 33% of our energy consumption needs. So imagine a huge infrastructure of 45 nuclear plants and substantially increased offshore drilling, and we're only dealing with 3% of our needs. But by making buildings more energy efficient, we're addressing over 33% of our energy needs. In fact, that's why Architecture 2030 President says, the road to energy independence, economic and recovery reduction, and greenhouse gas emissions runs through the building sector, and I might add, runs through the windows. What we have now is a trillion dollar wake-up call, and actually it's a bigger than a tr trillion dollar wake-up call. McKinsey and company did a survey, and what they did is they calculated that the impact of the carbon emission business, just the carbon clean air business, is going to create company values of over seven trillion dollars. So by being involved in carbon emission reduction, you can be part of a $7 trillion industry. And a big portion of that can be windows, and I'll show that very shortly. 
The technology that you're going to be looking at today has the potential and should be the primary source of energy demand reduction globally and a major source of decreased emissions. Because remember, the cleanest energy is the energy you conserve. Window insulators can, should, and must be a force in energy independence going forward if we're going to gain control of the huge needs in energy and the carbon emission problem. Again, this can be the primary source of energy demand reduction from what you've seen. From that, I'm going to like to open the, give the mic over to Keith Roberts. Keith Roberts is the Vice President of Energy Efficiency Done Right. He's also our Business Development Manager. Keith's going to talk about the building envelope and its impact. Here's Keith Roberts. Thank you. My name is Keith Roberts. Thank you so much for the opportunity of talking to you. <clears throat> Let me tell you about my credentials. I'm a conservationist, and I like to save money. Call me cheap, but I want to save the world, and I want to do it in the best possible way. And one of the best ways to do that is through inflector. Simply put, as Dennis said, the windows are the weakest point in the building envelope. The windows are my enemy. That's where my money is going out, and you know I'm going to do what I can do to stop it. So the point is this. I'm going to do it in the most efficient way and with the quickest payback, and my best friend is Inflector. So let's talk about the building envelope as a whole. Simply put, as Dennis told you, buildings are responsible for approximately 38% of the U.S. carbon dioxide emissions. So how do we increase the energy efficiency in the buildings? Simply put is this, the building envelope, what is it and how does it work? Where the building is simply, the building envelope is the windows, the doors, the walls, the foundations, the floor, the roofs, the skylights. Energy is escaping through all of these. And I'm going to do what I can to make it the most energy efficient building possible. And one of the best ways to do that is to inflect the window insulators. I'm going to show that to you right now. The cost saving objective is this is a building will lose heat in cold weather and gain it when it's hot outside. Your basic cost of saving objective is to minimize the cost to correct these losses and gains. And according to the energy efficiency guide for business, the objective to minimize energy costs is the building envelope itself. We're going to make it as energy efficient as possible. We're going to stop infiltration, reduce heat, transfer, control humidity, and control sunlight. And how do we do that? Well, by stopping the infiltration, what we do is this. We prevent the leaking of the inside of air from going out or vice versa. Hot, cold, air infiltration, exfiltration. Prevent the leaking of the air inside you have paid for the heat through openings such as cracks in the walls and your windows. Reducing tr heat transfer simply is minimize the transfer of heat through materials in the building envelope itself. Heat always flows from a warmer environment to a colder one. All materials conduct heat, but such metal or single pane of glass conduct it faster through a substance as fiberglass, which is a poor con conductor and therefore a good insulator. Our value is uh, a measure of resistance to heat flow. The resistance to the R value number, the higher the resistance. Control humidity. Control the movement of water vapor in and out to achieve appropriate humidity levels for health, comfort, and protection. It's simply as this is a comfort zone. It, we got to control the heat or the cold in order to be comfortable. And that's the most important part is to be comfortable. Next best thing is, again, saving money. I am a very frugal person. I like to save money. Vapor barriers and ventilations can prevent condensation associated rot and mildew problems. Control sunlight. By letting the sun's light in during the winter can be a good thing. This is something that window film prevents, but we'll get that in a second. You keep that heat out when not wanted. You can reduce levels of artificial light, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning loads. The building envelope under the microscope. Let's take a look at all of them. The foundation is an R20, an internal vapor barrier. That's good. The walls, insulated R20, internal vapor barrier, that is good. The attic insulation, we're between R40 and R80 now, which is an internal vapor barrier, optional radiant heat barrier, vented decode, that is excellent. Heating and cooling high efficiency, HVACs, high sear ratings, are become more and more efficient, that is good. The healing and cooling network under or close to windows is good. The window, double pane argon gas filled, low E coated window, has an R value of 4.5. That's not good. That's pathetic. A window can be R rated between R1 and R5. 
Uh, you can convert that to U value, but let's simply put just talk R value because it relates to all the uh, matters of the billing envelope. So check this out. You have R20 insulation in the basement. That's good. R20 in the walls. Good. A minimum of R40 in the attic. And windows. R1 to R1.5. That is pathetic. What do you think the heat goes? As a coin ash rate, 53% of the energy goes out to our windows. That's money that's leaving my pocket, and I want to stop it. The truth about windows is this, is that a single-pane window loses 20 times as much heat as the same area in an adjacent well-insulated wall, and a double-glazed window loses 10 times as much. Amount of heat loss gained through windows depends on whether windows are single-pane or double-pane. Nevertheless, that's still 53% of your energy going through the window. So, windows lose and gain heat in four ways. Conduction, convection, radiation, and air leakage. Radiation is the movement of heat as the infrared energy goes through the glass. Conduction, convection, as we know, and air leakage, hot cold infiltration, and exfiltration. So, the typical window summer performance is this. Radiant heat going through the window. Solar heat gain going through the window. Damaging UV rays, fading carpet and your blinds, furniture, and also hot air infiltration. This is a very weak point in the building envelope. Windows are also the highest per capita source of infiltration in the envelope. So typical window winter performance. Solar heat going in, well, that's good. Damaging UV rays, not so good. Loss of thermal, nighttime thermal heat loss. Exfiltration. So if the colder outside than inside, since heat travels to cold, you lose heat through your windows due to excellent infiltration and conduction. Let's look at uh, various options of controlling that uh, building envelope, that heat from escaping or going in. Blinds, shutters, shades, and curtains, do they control sunlight? Control sunlight? Yes, they do. Reduce heat transfer? No. Stop infiltration? No. Control humidity? No. When the film... Darker tents make people feel like they're cooler, but it can't attract heat. No payback usually voids window warranty. Window film does control sunlight, but during the winter, it stops that heat from coming in. You want that heat coming in. It does not reduce heat transfer, stop infiltration, or could control humidity. Solar screens, yes, it controls sunlight. Not much benefit for cost with limited lifespan because it is outside. Reduces heat transfer, stops heat infiltration, and control humidity, no. Double pane and triple pane glass? Well, does it control sunlight? No. It does reduce the heat transfer, stop infiltration, and control humidity to a very limited point. This is a double, triple bad insulator, minimal payback. Inflector, it addresses all four. It does control sunlight, reduce heat transfer, stop infiltration, and control humidity. This is the engineered solution with the most comfort in under a five-year payback, long lifespan. We've had this on some General Motors plants for over 20 years. We don't know what the lifespan of it is. Solar screens, we took off out of a U.S. Air Force base out at Lackland Air Force Base. We took over 200 of those off because the simple put is that people were still getting hot. Instead, the U.S. Air Force installed over 1,200 windows with the inflector window insulator. The Advantage Window Systems Research and Development Team found this is the only solution that addresses all four of those. The inflector is a see-through radiant heat barrier. Let me say that again. The inflector is a see-through radiant heat barrier. As everyone knows, radiant barriers are the future. And this is a see-through radiant barrier. It is the first line of defense against the heat transfer in and out of buildings through windows. Inflector window inserts are pioneers in window efficiency. We've been around over 20 years. The one-way heat transferable reversible inflector is the engineered solution, which addresses more than just the reluctance reflectance of solar heat gain. It also magnifies heat. It enhances the heat coming in your home. We're going to show you that in a second here. The reversible inflector window insulator material puts three useful properties to work for you. Reflectivity, emissivity, and absorption. The reflective silver side was chosen for two reasons. First, to reflect solar heat gain back out through the window. Secondly, and most importantly, it is a radiant barrier. It's aluminum. It has a low emissivity between 0.3 and 0.5. This means that only 3 to 5% of the radiant heat is emitted through the aluminum, reflecting the heat in the direction the aluminum side is facing. Third, the reverse side of the system is a passive solar collecting one-way heat transfer. And let me state that it magnifies the heat significantly. 